this opportunity that we have to enter into your courts, Father. Yes. We, pr we pray that our praises would be like incense unto you, Father. Yes. That it would be an acceptable gift unto you, Lord. We pray that you be with us, Father. You, you enter into our midst, Lord, and that, that you allow us just to experience your Holy Spirit, Father, mm -hmm. and that you would just have your way in this service, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> far as run. <clears throat>
Yes. Yes. Do y'all mind if I share something just really momentarily? <laughs> I just was, just now as I'm worshiping that song, right? Like, I picked that song like at the last minute. Yes, this morning, yesterday. And um, the order, you know, that I put it in is from the Holy Spirit, right? And so the next song that we're singing is No Longer Slaves. And God was showing me on my way here that I walk in confidence and freedom now from the Holy Spirit. Like I'm no longer bound as a slave. But as I'm singing Waymaker just now, you know, a lot of times, like, for instance, you know, he's here turning every life around and not to make this about myself because it's only glorifying the Lord, but my life has been completely turned around since I've started coming to this church. And I started attending here in 2019 and um, just fresh off of drugs. And uh, I was having a really hard time with like, the Holy Spirit was dwelling in me, like I accepted him into my heart, rededicated my life to him, really walked this out, like for real. But I kept backsliding, so I put myself in a program and then I got out and I was running from God and just, you know, a whole bunch of mess to finally get me to where I am now in this past year that um, I really just surrendered it all to God. And so, um, you know, I work at a faith-based women's ministry and I was just talking to these ladies. It's just all of this, God circles it all back around. You know, on Friday, you know, a couple of them have been there for a few months and um, they feel like, you know, they've gotten complacent in their walk. And, um, you know, a lot of times when we first come to the Lord, like we see him moving so quick, right? And then there's a point where God just wants us to rest in him. And it's not that he's not working in our lives, but it's that he wants us to really see what he's doing. And like, he's working on our patience and our endurance. Like, are we gonna have that steadfast faith, you know? And so like, just in singing this, it just made me realize like, even though when, like God does things for us quickly, right? But it's not that he's not working. Like he's always working on us, right? And we we just have to allow to be totally surrendered in that and to bask in him and his presence and just be in him every day you know and that, that I just I just felt that revelation to share with y'all you know like I don't know you know how you came in today but God will turn it all around no matter what it is it doesn't have to be drugs it can be minute and you not think well I don't have a testimony like her like God is gonna use anything and he wants to use you right now where you're at and he wants to turn it all around in your life, you know? And he wants to let you see that he's working even in the midst that you feel like he's not working, like he's orchestrating everything in his perfect plan for your life. And so you don't have to walk around like a slave. You can be free and uh, bound in him and not in the things of this world or what you're battling. Amen? Amen. <laughs> You unwrap me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer
Sunday morning, we could be anywhere. Thank you. Check, check. There we go. On a Sunday morning, we can be anywhere, right? right? But thankfully, we choose to be in the house of God. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you now, this is where lives are changed. This is where addiction gets broken. Amen? Chains yeah. get broken. There's no better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 This morning, just want to take the time to say welcome to One Accord Ministries. Welcome each and every one of you, Pastor, Sister Ashley, they send their regards. They are in Philadelphia this morning ministering, amen. Now last week, many of you know, I was up here doing tithes and offerings. And who recalls what I said? Anybody? Close, close, we'll help you out. That, that offering that's given here doesn't go to line pockets, it doesn't buy fancy cars and homes and steak dinners and all of that, right? But it goes out for a ministry, amen? So you may not think that your, your offering goes anywhere, right? But just notice that it's because people give and they give faithfully that pastor's able to go out and minister to others, amen? Just this past weekend, how many of you are familiar with our Amazon giveaways? A lot of you, right? With our Amazon giveaways, they were able to take an 18-wheeler into the Bronx, New York, and give out Amazon packages while ministering to the people there. Amen. If you haven't done so, go to onecoreministries.net. Check it out. They've got videos up on uh, social media and all over the place, right? Make sure to check it out. And I'm sure this afternoon, Pastor's Message from Philadelphia will, will be up. So make sure to check those out. Amen. Tithes and offerings. How many of you know it's important to give? Amen? Amen. This is just a continued act of worship. Amen? An opportunity for us to just show gratitude to the Lord for all that he's done. Right? Because how many of you know it's only by his strength, right? Only by his strength that we're able to work up. We're, ab we're able to, to work up. We're able to wake up. Work, we're able to work up too, Right? Right. We're able to, to go to work. We're able to do the things that we need to do to provide for our families. Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. My wife knows I get up early every morning. And every morning she's there faithfully praying for me as I travel to and from work. Amen. Look, we've got three different ways you can give. You can give via the Secure Give app. You can give through oneaccordministries.net. And you can also give cash or check. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for just this opportunity to continue through our act of worship, Lord, that we bring this offering unto you, Lord, that it would be used in a mighty way for your kingdom, Lord. Allow it to go forth, Lord. Allow it to plant seeds, Lord. And just allow it to expand your kingdom, Father. Not for our glory, but for your glory, Father. We just thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for being here and allowing us, Lord to be in your presence. We thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Kids, you are dismissed for Kids Church. Amen. You can give tithes your offerings here in the basket.
I thank you, God, for the air in my lungs. I thank you, God, for filling my cup. I thank you, God, so I'ma praise you. Come on, kids. One more time. Amen, amen, amen. Look, if Pastor were here, he'd be proud. Pastor would be proud, amen. So it's me again. <laughs> Weekly announcements, amen. Look, a lot of you are familiar with what we do week in and week out, right? Of course, Sunday morning, 1030 service. On uh, Monday, we've got Monday Night Raw. You can come in person. You can uh, do it via Zoom, amen, if you need some information on that. You can see Brother Gary. Where is he at? I know he's here. Oh, right there in the back. He's got his hand lifted, so make sure you connect with him after, after service. Men's group, 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. Men's group, 7 o'clock on Tuesdays via Zoom. If you're not part of that, I encourage you to join us. Also on Tuesday, we've got kids' praise break. How many of you know? That's a blessing to our kids. Amen. If you haven't been a part of that, I encourage you to join in on Wednesday. 6.30 service right here at the church. Yeah, I like yeah. to call it the Hour of Power, the Warrior Wednesday, right? And Friday, we've got <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, we're, we're canceling. <laughs> Thursday evening, 6.30 via Zoom, or you're welcome to come to the house. My wife leads. The women's Bible study there, and just an awesome time, an awesome experience. Amen. We ask this to silence your phone uh, during the service, and if you need to exit for any reason, please exit to the outside. Amen. 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 Look, let me uh, let me call my special guest up. Come on. A great woman of God. Amen. I might amen. be a little biased, but amen. Eleanor, come on. <laughs> amen. Look, let me, let me share this. As many of you know, you know, my wife posted on social media about it being our anniversary this past, this past Friday. <laughs> so thank you for the happy anniversary wish, wishes. And um, <laughs> she can expand on that a little bit later. So it was the anniversary of the day that he tried to Mac to me. <laughs> uh, hold on, what do you mean tried? Because you, you see that we're here, right? That's <laughs> right. But how many of you know that on the 29th is the anniversary of Katrina, you know? And, and I just want to encourage you, encourage you with that because even through the storm, no matter what life issues you've got going on, that God can still bless you. Amen. God can still bless you. Because we wouldn't have known that, that we would be together. And we went to Bible college. I saw her. And, and, of course, I was interested. But I was like, nah, you know, I can't. Not in Bible college, right? <laughs> but God, God had other plans. Amen. Amen. Look, also one more time. Uh, where's my mother-in-law? My in-laws are in town. Amen. Okay. Let me tell you, I have, again, I'm biased, but I've got the world's best in-laws. I, I tell you hands down, they're so supportive. They love Jesus. Amen. There she is. My, my mother-in-law on the back. <laughs> my father-in-law, Alberto. They're just so encouraging, and it's good to see godly men and women that love Jesus wholeheartedly. Amen? Yes, amen. What a great example to follow. They're supportive of us, our ministry, and, and I tell you what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade them for anything. Amen? amen? Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for this message that's going forth. Father, we pray that you hide Eleanor behind your cross, Lord that people would hear and see you through the words being delivered, Father, that lives would be changed, Lord, 
transformation would happen, Father, and that you would just have your way. Holy Spirit, we invite you here today, Lord. We pray for full altars, Lord, and that you would just have your way, Father. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, love. Let me tell you something. My marriage, my happy marriage, didn't come without a fight. Come on. Come on now. We've celebrated 18 years in July, but it didn't come without some opposition. Okay? That's right. Uh, just thinking about how many times we thought about divorce, separation, you know, and, and walking away from the ministry, walking away from each other, walking away even from God, because it was so rough. Anybody, anybody can relate? Yeah. You know, when you go through so much opposition, right, where you feel like I can't take one more thing. Not one more thing. I don't want more bad news. I don't want one more issue. I don't want one more complaint. I don't want one more thing. Or I am going to break. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Whether it's opposition in your health, opposition in a relationship, whether it be your you know, marriage, coworkers, children, whatever it may be. Opposition in relationships. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Opposition in your finances. Anybody know what I'm talking about there? Any, uh, opposition in work, you know, trying to find work and things of that nature. Opposition, just opposition. Opposition in your mind. I don't know about you, but when I think about like how the enemy wanted to take me out, it was always in my mind. You know, the Bible teaches us that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So as long as I was out of the presence of God, there was fullness of depression, sadness, anger, frustration, agitation, and all suicide, all sorts of things. You think about it, you name it, it's there. Outside of the presence of what? God. But in the presence, there's what? Full, say it with me. Fullness. Fullness. Can you turn me up on this mic just a little bit? Because I feel like I'm hollering. All right. Fullness of joy. Why is it that the scriptures doesn't say fullness of love? fullness of peace fullness of y'all give me some give me some examples love. happiness love you know excitement and whatever courage uh, why is it that the scripture god has got god is specific you know in his presence there's what fullness of joy and his right hand are pleasures forevermore why joy remember joy of the lord is what what strength Hello, not the love, not the peace. All those things are good. We need that, amen, because it keeps us going. But it's the joy of the Lord. Well, how can I get this joy? Because, you know, I'm struggling, Sister Eleanor. I'm glad you got the joy, but I don't got the joy. How does one get, this is not my message this morning, y'all. How does one get the joy in the presence? In the presence. If you got to get in the presence, crawling. If you got to get in the presence, you know, However it is, making your way, but make your way to what? The presence. Get in the presence of God. How does one get in the presence of God? Right here. You want the presence? Get in the word. Because let me tell you something. Every time I open up this word, let me tell you. I could be struggling and going through something. I don't know why the Lord wants me to share this, but I'm going to share it. All right. I can go into the Psalms. Just an example. I can go into the Psalms and I can open up the Psalms. Boom. I'm in Psalms and I'm struggling and I'm like, you know, I'm angry and I'm complaining and I'm frustrated and I've got all these things on my mind. I'm, I'm whatever. And I can open up the Psalms and I can look and look there. Boom. Psalms uh, nine. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I don't feel like it, God, I'm struggling, but I will give thanks to you with my whole heart because you saved me, because you delivered me, because you kept me from things that I didn't know were there to harm me and to do me wrong. God, I will give you thanks with my whole heart. I will thank you because you woke me up this morning. I will thank you because you got a roof over my head. God, because you got clothes on my back and food on my table. I will thank you, God. I will thank you. I will thank you. Bam. And all of a 
sudden you're in the presence of God and he's reminding you of what he's done in through your life. And then you find yourself with this joy, unspeakable and full of glory. That no matter what's going on, yeah, yeah, things are, <laughs> things are rough right now, but I've got the joy of the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Just that one verse. You can keep going. You can keep going and you can find other verses. Oh my goodness. You have known to me the path of life in your presence. Woo! There is fullness of joy and at your right hands are pleasure forevermore. I, didn't, I just opened it up. I mean, if God isn't trying to speak, I don't know what is. I don't know who needs the presence, but get in there. Amen. All right. That's not the message. Opposition. How many of us have experienced or are experiencing opposition this morning? Opposition. You get that pushback. Every time you're trying to go forward, that opposition is right there to push you right back and cause you to stumble. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, let me see the hands. I need to know you're with me and I'm not alone in this thing. I need to know that I'm not alone. Amen? All right? So we're going to go to Daniel this morning. All right? And I want, just for a moment, y'all, listen, young men, I'm about to call y'all out. Work with me, okay? If you are 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, would you please just stand up for one moment? Just stand up. All right? I see you. (laughs) Come on. Just stand up for me. Just stand up. Just stand up. All right, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing, I promise. All I'm going to do is ask you to stand up here, and then I'm going to ask you to sit down. I'm not asking you to say anything. If you're that age, will you just come up here real quick, please? Just real quick, just real quick. I know the boys don't like, I know, I'm sorry, forgive me, but I just, I need to, yeah, come on up. Come on up. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. Y'all look at these young men. Look at these young men. Because what we're going to talk about today is about young men their age. They were their age. Y'all look at them. Look at them real good. Look at how young and how handsome they are. Look at them and look at to know that God has a call. Woo! On each one of their lives in the name of Jesus. And that there's an enemy out there that wants to sift them as we, that he wants to do things to them, to harm them, to kill them, to steal from them, to destroy them. But God has come to give them life. Woo! And life much more abundant. When we think about this story, as we go through this story today, I want you to picture these young men. Because this is how old they were. Thank you, young men. Let's give them a hand. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for them. Y'all stretch your hands this way, God, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord. I thank you for these young men. Lord, I thank you, Father, for the call. I thank you, God, for what you have in store for them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that each and every one of them, God, will rise up to be the man of God that you called them to be. God, I thank you, Father, that they will be the head and not the tail in the name of Jesus, that they will be above and not beneath, Father. I thank you, Lord, that they will walk in truth and walk in your light in the name of Jesus, that they will walk in integrity, Lord, that they will walk father with you lord i just thank you for them god show them and teach them who you are god go before them go behind them hem them all around place your hand upon them oh god in jesus name we pray and everybody said amen thank you young men that was not planned but thank you thank you thank you thank you let's go to daniel Woo! let's go to daniel we're gonna jump right in this thing amen Look, I tried to be fancy today. I put my notes on an electronic device. I'm old school and I use paper and pen, but I I tried to be cute, so y'all bear with me, okay? (laughs) All right, opposition before what? Promotion. Y'all say it with me. Opposition before promotion, all right? And listen, (laughs) the slides back there, y'all try to keep up, but if it gets too confusing, you can shut it down, okay? All right, so Daniel chapter 1, 1 through 7. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to give you some highlights. You can read it if you want to, but here are the highlights because we want to get to uh, chapter 3, all right? Here's what's going on, y'all with me? The Lord allows the Jews, all right, along with these like religious vessels, these religious items that are in the house of God, all right, he allows for the Jews and these items, all right, to be taken captive. They're besieged by a nation called Babylon. Say Babylon. Babylon. 
all right? And the Babylonian king, his name is Nebuchadnezzar. Whoo, that took me a minute to say it, all right? Nebu, what? Nebuchadnezzar. He brings them to the land of Shinar. Shinar is where, I don't know if you guys know the story of the Tower of Babel. All right, that's where kind of the Tower of Babel was erected. And then there's also there a, a temple that is dedicated to the Babylonian god. All right, this Babylonian god is called Marduk or Bel. All right, so this is where they take who? The Jews and the religious items and they bring them captive to this house of Shinar. All right, again, the Babylonians are pagan, paganistic people. What does pagan mean? It means to worship many gods. Okay, not just one, they are what? Many, pagan, all right? All right, so then now, You've got this chief eunuch. Everybody say chief eunuch. chief eunuch. This chief eunuch named Ashpenaz. All right. Ashpenaz, now he's a eunuch, and his assignment, a eunuch's assignment, is to really guard the rooms of the royal women. All right. But in this particular case, he's given the assignment of recruiting all the royal and noble young men from where? from the, Jew, the Jews, okay? And he says, I want you to gather them. This is coming from the king. I want you to gather all these young men, bring them in. Remember what we did. What did we just do? What did we just do here? We gathered, we gathered all the young men, but they're not praying for them here. They're not praying for them here. They gathered all the young men, and they, there were some things that had to be, they had some qualifications they needed to, to uh, come up with. All right. Y'all ready? These eunuchs, all right, or this eunuch, he had to make sure that these young men were without blemish, good in appearance, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, and learning. They had to be competent to stand in the king's palace. Wow, that's a list, huh? Yeah. So out of all these men, they take all the royal, all the noble, noble means, you know, high status, all right? They bring all these young men, and then they have to start picking, and say, okay, good in appearance, knowledge, skillful in all wisdom, understanding, learning, and they take, take them, and they bring them to the palace with the purpose of, y'all ready? To teach them the literature, say literature, literature. and the language of the Chaldeans. To teach them two things, the lit literature and the language of the Chaldeans. Why? Let's talk about the Chaldeans just a little bit. All right. The Chaldeans, they're originally from the south part of Mesopotamia, which is known today as modern day Iraq. Okay. <laughs> These Chaldeans, uh, a lot of people associate them with being Babylonians. Yes, they are Babylonians, but they're from the southern part. They had their own little tribe and village, again, called the Chaldeans. Okay, and so these, these Chaldeans, they were known to be super intelligent, aggressive, and warlike people. Warlike people. The term Chaldean later was used to refer to be somebody influential, highly educated, all right, more so than just a race. Y'all with me? All right, so what were the Chaldeans? Educated, highly influential, they were war, what? Warlike people. What does it mean to be warlike? Come on, talk to me. They're ready to fight, right? <laughs> warlike, all right? So the Chaldeans were renowned for their study and knowledge of astrology and astronomy. All right? They were renowned. So uh, what was that? Um, Ay, como se llama? That thing where they assign you like a something of the what horoscopes, okay? These guys were like well versed in that stuff, the Chaldeans, okay? So now let's jump to verse five if we can. Oh wait, before we go there, the the king, he wanted these boys to be well versed in these two languages, right? The language of what the Chaldeans and their literature, all right? Again, Babylonian king, 
Why does he want them be, to be well-versed? Because this man is surrounded by magicians, astrologers, enchanters, and all kinds. He wants people who are going to make him feel good. Okay? He wants people who are going to tell him that he wants yes people. <laughs> he wants people that are ready to just give him good news at any turn. All right? Let's keep going. He's training these young men to be just that. Training and name changes. All right? So in verse 5, the king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate. This was in their training. What? I get to eat the delicacies of the king? Yeah. All right. And drink their wine. They were to be educated for three years. How long? Three. three years. And at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. What were they supposed to do? Stand before the king. And among these, these group of young men, four stood out. Daniel, whom they call what? Belteshazzar, try and say that three times, all right, Hananiah, who they called Shadrach, Mishael, who they called Meshach, and Azariah, who they called what? Abednego. Abednego, all right, but one of them, one of the four, he stands up and he asks a very serious question, he takes a risk, right off the bat, he takes a risk, he's in the middle of opposition, because let me tell you something, how many of you would say that being besieged and held captive is opposition. <laughs> right. Taken out of your country, brought to a place where now your world is turned upside down. Yes, you get to eat the king's delicacies. Sure, they give you a little wine, but you're no longer home. You're no longer in your, there you go, comfort zone, your environment your stomping grounds, and you're taken out of your comfort zone. Daniel gets up, we're gonna jump down to verse 11, and he says, because what they're, what they're instructed to do is they're gonna do this for three years. They're gonna eat this stuff, they're gonna learn this stuff, three years of training. Daniel stands up and then he says to King James Version says Melzar. Some other translations don't give us a name at all. But he says to this guy who is the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned. So you have the chief eunuch whose name is Ashpenaz, but now you have a steward, all right, who some translations call Melzar. And Dave, uh, Daniel says to this man, he says to this man right here, y'all ready? Look, we don't want to eat this stuff. Will you please give us vegetables and water for 10 days? Give us 10 days, vegetables and water. At the end of those 10 days, we want you to what? Test us and see if we're fit, okay? That's a pretty bold request. Now, the steward has a decision to make to either say yes or to what? Follow who? The king's rule, the king's, this is what he wants. So this young man over the steward, I don't know if he's a young man, but the steward over here now is cornered with a decision. Do I do this? If this doesn't work out, it's my head. But if it works out, this could be really good. So now he's taking a risk too. Let me tell you something. If this doesn't show you anything, this is what it showed me. That in the time of opposition, God will strategically place people in your path to be for you. And that help will come from places you least expected. It will come from places you least expected. Your job is to honor God. These young men, Daniel in specific, did not want anything that the king had to offer. He knows those things were offered to idols. I don't want any of that. He wanted to honor God. Give us vegetables and water for 10 days. Turns to the steward, will you please do this? 10 days, test us, 10 days. Steward has to make a decision. Yes, he will do it. God will place people in your life, people you least expected, to be for you. Amen? Amen? And to help you along your way and along your journey 
even in the midst of what? Opposition. Even in the midst of your hardship, God will place people that you did not expect will be the ones to help you. Anybody ever experienced that? I know I have. If you don't have a reason to praise God, you can give him that reason right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for every provision that you have given me. Ways that you've provided that I never thought would be possible. Amen? This is the kind of God that we serve. All right? So he took the risk. God grants them favor. All right? Again, God is strategic and will put people you least expect in your corner. All right? Then he equips them for the task. If you go to 17, it says, as for these youths for youth, God gave them learning and skill. Who gave it to them? God gave it to them. Now, mind you, it's the Babylonians who are, or the Chaldeans that are teaching them this. But who gave them this? God gave them what? Learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel, in, to Daniel, he gave a little extra. He said he gave him what? Understanding of visions. And he was also able to interpret them. Understand he was able to give them and interpret. Not only visions, but dreams too. Verse 19, and the king spoke with them and among, look, look at this, and the king spoke with them, these four, and among them all, of none of them was found like who? Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Again, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and who? Abednego. Therefore, they stood before the king, and look at this, look at this, look at this, and in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the queen, king inquired of them, so that means they were grilled. That means that the king sat there and gave them question after question after question. All right, he grilled them. And in everything that they answered, what does it say? He found them. Everybody say 10. Let me see your 10 fingers. 10 times. Did you know God could make you 10 times better? Did you know that? Did you know God can give you 10 times the wisdom, 10 times the strength, 10 times the understanding, 10 times the joy, 10 times the peace? Did you know God can do that? He can do that because that's who he is. Amen? God can do that. How many of you need that? Come on. Don't be afraid to ask, Lord, I'm right here. God, give me, give me, fill me with wisdom and understanding 10 times more, God. I don't, I, look, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why you got me in this position, Lord? How in the world did I get here? Why did they pick me? Why am I doing this? Because he has anointed you for such a time. Because he has called you. Even if just to show you who he is. Just to show you who he is. I am God all by myself. You don't need the help that you think you need. Your help isn't going to come from where you think it's going to come oh, from. That's right. That's right. How many of you have, come on, go into a situation and you go, oh, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go to such and such. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to go ask for that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You have plan A, plan B, plan C. And sometimes God will position you and corner you in such a way where you ain't got nobody. You call somebody, they don't answer. You go see somebody, they not home. Anybody? Good to see you, mommy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hmm? I've been there. You call a prayer warriors and they don't even answer. You call a pastor and he busy. You're out of town. Huh? You call your best friend and she's caught up in something. Or he. And you, you find yourself what? All alone. And God is like, yo. Yeah. Ah. Ah. I would, I come on, talk to me. That's all right. You ain't got nobody. Come on. I'm sorry I was your last resort, but I should have been your first. I should have been your first. Because what I had for you stored up was ten times better. You tried to go to sister so-and-so, brother such-and-such, -such, but I'm telling you right now, if you'd have came to me from the beginning, you'd have been on top ten times better. I don't know how many times I got to hit my head against the same wall to, to learn that. Huh? I'm getting better. I don't know about y'all. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Praise you, Jesus. Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers and chanters that were in all his kingdom. You mean the people of God 
had more insight and more wisdom and more information than the people who called on astrology? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because astrology ain't got nothing on God. He's the one who created the stars in the universe. Ain't got nothing on him. All right, he's the one who's full of wisdom, who dishes out wisdom how he desires. Our job is to go after it. Amen? All right. Chapter 2, just a brief synopsis. We're not, we don't even have to go to chapter 2. Just leave it right there on opposition before promotion. All right? Here's what happens in chapter 2. Very quickly, because we're not touching chapter 2 really, but we're going to talk about it because you need to know what's going on. If you know me, you know I like to know the background because we got to understand how we got to chapter 3. All right? Chapter 2 is about this. The king has a dream of a statue with a head of gold and the other po- body parts of other materials. All right? So the other materials are silver, bronze, iron, and clay. He has this dream and no magician, no seer, no astrologer in his kingdom can reveal or interpret the dream. And that's what he wants. Reveal and interpret the dream. I'm not telling nobody nothing. If you guys really are who you say are, you should know. But nobody can tell him because you know what? Ain't nobody got insight like God does. Right? So Daniel heals, hears about this. He prays and God reveals the dream to him. He reveals the dream and he goes to the king And he tells him what the dream was and then the interpretation. For revealing the dream, the king honors Daniel. He acknowledges God and promotes Daniel. This is what he says in Daniel chapter 2, verses 45 through 49. I'm going to read it very quick. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face (laughs) and paid homage to Daniel. He honored him and commanded that an offering and incense be offered up to him. The king answered and said to Daniel, look at this confession from the enemy. Truly your God is God of gods. You mean to tell me that in the middle of Daniel's opposition, God used him? God positioned him, gave him 10 times more than what he needed? made him stand out from the rest gives him honor in the middle of it all yes if there's anything that we should learn is it doesn't matter what we're going because did he come out of is he out of the opposition is he back in his country nope is he still a slave to the babylonians because that's what he really is yes he is But even in the midst of that, God uses him. And he's a willing vessel. Then, but Daniel, Daniel is bold. I like Daniel. This is what he says. The king answered him and said, truly your God is God of gods and Lord of kings. What is is Nebuchadnezzar? And so he's acknowledging your God is Lord over me. And revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king gave Daniel, what? High honors and many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. But look, 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 Do not be afraid to make your request known. Don't be afraid. The worst you can get is a no. It's the worst you can get. All right. So he says, Daniel made a request of the king and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs. What was Daniel's request? Can my homeboys come with me? These, these three that were faithful and stuck with me. They fasted with me. They, they ate the vegetables and water with me. Come on. They stuck with me. Who you are attached to matters. Who you are attached to in the midst of your opposition matters. If you are attached to naysayers, grumblers, and mumblers, you will not win. You will not win. You will not gain any favor. Any favor. But if you are attached to people who are right there with you, praying and believing God right alongside of you, watch God work. Watch 
God work. And again, who you are attached to matters because you are now positioned. Daniel was now positioned to be a blessing to his friends. But the friends positioned themselves to receive that blessing from the get-go by being true and being ready. Amen? By being true and being ready. Now we go into chapter 3, y'all. Chapter 3, we go in there. Y'all ready? Who's with me? Who's with me? Who's with me? Now, why was it important for me to share that with you? Because you needed to understand Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's background. Okay? How they got to where they got. Do you understand? Because these guys didn't appear just out of nowhere. Their stories are in there for a reason. Their attachment to Daniel is in there for a reason. So that we can pull, we can take, we can digest, we can learn, but we can also say, well, wait a minute, (laughs) if God did it for them, because is God not the same yesterday, today, and forever? Come on, say it with me. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. So if God did it for these guys, why would he not do it for me? Did you know that you can open up the scriptures and as you read the story, you can say, God, if you did it for these guys, you can do it for me. You can do it for whoever it is that you're praying for. Do it for them, God, because you do not change. You're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And I trust you and I stand on your word because your word does not return to you void, but will accomplish that which it set out to do. You're not a man that you would lie, nor the son of man that you should change your mind or repent about anything. You are who you say you are and your word is truth. It is not in God's nature. It is, he is incapable of lying. It's not in him. It's not a part of him. He is unable. He cannot because he is truth he is the fullness of truth he is the embodiment of truth so if you are that you are incapable of lying do you understand so we can hold on to god's word and know that god you said you're gonna do this i believe you and i trust you and i'm gonna stand right here waiting for your promises to come to pass And in the waiting, I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to do like Daniel and them, and I'm going to serve. I'm under these leadership that, you know what, I don't know what's going on because they don't love Jesus. How many of you are in places where you work under people that are just of the devil? (sighs) Anybody know what I'm talking about? You sometimes get up, and you get ready, and you walk into some atmospheres that just, man, you just like, God, you walk out of there, and you feel so dirty, you feel so filthy, you feel so heavy, you feel like you can't take it, you just want to go home, lay down, and do nothing. Because the attack was so heavy throughout the day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But greater is he. Y'all stick your chest out just a little bit. Raise your head up a little bit. Square your shoulders. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God, you are greater in me. You are greater in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Amen? Amen. Let's keep going. Now we're going into chapter three. Woo! I love chapter three. Oh, all right. Chapter three. Three. We already talked about Daniel being promoted. All right. Now Daniel is over in some other area of the the kingdom, and then you got these three Hebrew boys who were promoted also, and they're serving in their promotion. They're doing. They're going about their day to day serving. Chapter three. Despite the warning of the dream in Daniel's interpretation in chapter two. The king makes a golden image because that interpretation was to let him know your kingdom's going to fall. But despite all of that, King Nebuchadnezzar makes this golden statue, erects it, okay? And he decrees that all people of every nation and tongue, how many, if you're of every nation and tongue, raise your hand. That would be all of us. Every nation, that means if you were here, you would be required. All right? He requires everybody of every nation and every tongue to bow down and worship 
that image. When they hear the music, because he says, I want music playing. Now, when you hear the music, what are you supposed to do? As soon as you hear the music, as soon as you hear the music, bow down. Okay? Bow down. If not, check out verse 6. 3 verse 6 if you got it. Therefore, at that time, certain what? Chaldeans. Chaldeans, they were aggressive and what? Warlike. All right? They had warlike traits. Now they're, they're surfacing, y'all. Those warlike traits are surfacing. Because look what it says. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They maliciously accused the Jews. We know them as the three Hebrew boys. <clears throat> he accuses the boys, or they accuse the boys. They big up the king because they say, Oh, king, live forever. That's how they start off when they go snitch on the boys. Oh, king, live forever. These boys, you know, they're not bowing down in short. These boys are not bowing down. Didn't you make a decree? Now, they are, now they're reminding him of what he, did, what, what he did. Didn't you make a decree that when the music sounds, everybody is supposed to bow down to the what? The golden image? Isn't that what you decreed, O king? Yeah, yeah? Well, they're not doing it. And doesn't it say that if they don't bow down, they are to be thrown into a fiery furnace? Yo, these guys wanted to do away with the Jews. They wanted these Jews destroyed. Not just punish them, get them out the picture. Me, I see some Chaldeans who want to fill some spots that are currently being occupied by God's people. Come on. That's what I see. Come on now. And they hate in a little bit. God has positioned you. And don't believe for one second <laughs> that there aren't going to be haters. Yes, All right. Looking at you, wanting what you got. They'll be there. They'll be there. But your job, your job is to keep doing what you're doing for the glory of God, not to stunt on the haters. Because if your motive is, I'm doing what I'm doing to stunt on the haters, you're losing. But if the motive and the purpose of your heart is, God, in this position, even though I'm not, I, I don't like where I'm at, I don't like what I'm doing, I don't, I don't care for this right now, I'm going to do it to honor you. I'm going to walk in integrity. I'm going to work in integrity. I'm going to honor you. The motive of my heart is going to remain pure before you. I know you're going to see me out of this. But in the meantime, I'm going to do right by you. Because the eyes of the Lord are upon me. That's what God is doing in the midst of your opposition. Don't be a naysayer. Oh, you see what I'm going, you see what I'm going through. Listen, we all, we all can have our little pity party, but you got to get up out of it. Take your moment to cry, take your moment to pout, and then get up and do what David did. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. What did David do say? Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I will yet praise him. Get up. Get up and get into the presence of God like we talked about earlier so that you can have that fullness of joy to do whatever it is god wants us to serve him with gladness yes, he, he really does Amen. so this king reminds them or the i'm sorry these these chaldeans remind them didn't you say that if nobody bows down that what you're going to do with them is throw them into what the fiery furnace you said that you said that he guilt these guys guilt trap the king all right, Daniel chapter 3, verse 12, all right, they guilt trap the king. Certain Jews whom you've appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And as a result, the king becomes enraged. Watch out for those instigators because they will be present. They will, don't complain about them. 
Don't be like, you know what they did? About? Listen, you're not gaining anything in doing that. I'm talking to myself, y'all. You're not gaining anything in doing that and turning your focus and your ear to what they're saying and what they're doing and what blah, 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 blah. It's just you. You have wasted minutes and hours and moments and weeks and months of your time focusing on that. When you could have been spending that time gaining the 10 times more. Gaining the 10 times more. As a result, the king becomes enraged. He has the boys brought out before him, questions them, and he says, is it true? Why do you think he said, is it true? Because he couldn't believe it. Right. He knew their integrity. He knew their character. But yeah, it was true. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. He gives them a second chance to bow down and warns them, if they do not, they will be thrown into the fiery furnace. Look what he says. In chapter uh, 3, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, <laughs> whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Now, I've heard this preached many ways. I've heard it preached where the three Hebrew boys got up, faced the king, and said, we don't need to answer you in this. We answer to God. Amen. I don't believe that was their attitude. These guys were humble. These guys respected their authority. Okay? Their response was respectful. King, we don't need to answer you in this. You know where we come from. Think about it. You're the one who took us out of Jerusalem. You know what we're about. O oh, king, we don't need to answer you in this matter. We serve God. And if you feel like you need to throw us in there, do it. We trust God. I personally, this is just, this is opinion right now. Okay, this is opinion. This is not, you see it however you want. I don't see it like that. And why don't I see it like that? Because I don't see God using these men right, in arrogance. Okay? I don't see that. I don't see that. Well, you know, because some people like to go off like that. Well, me and God and me and God and me and God. God. Is God not big enough and powerful enough to defend you? I don't know. I know for me he is. You humble yourself under my mighty hand, Eleanor. Humble yourself under my mighty hand and I will exalt you. You don't say a word. I will vindicate you. I will avenge you. I am your Lord. Your job is to remain humble. That's how I see it. Okay? So these three Hebrew boys, I don't need to answer you in this because you know what we're about. You know we were, we were about God from the beginning. But if you feel like you need to throw us in there, throw us in there. We're going to trust God. Amen. We're going to trust God. And if he wants to deliver us, he will. And if he doesn't, then he doesn't. Kind of like Esther, if I perish, I perish. I was talking to a sister the other day, and I was reminded. And I was reminding her, God is looking for us to say, you are my God no matter what no matter what god you are my god and that will not change that will never change i don't care how this turns out it doesn't matter how, if things go my way you are my god and that will not change god if you heal me praise you and if you don't you're still my god god if i keep this house you're my god if i lose it to foreclosure you're still my god amen God, if my kids walk in salvation, you're my God. And if they choose to go their own way, you're still my God. And that will not change. Amen. God, if you provide, then you're my God. And if you don't provide in this situation because you feel there's got to be another way, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you because you're my God. And that will not change. God is looking for hearts that are completely is. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are searching throughout the earth, looking for a heart that is completely his. 
I really believe God is asking us today, will I be your God no matter what? Will I be your God no matter what? No matter what? And God is looking for a response that says, you will be my God no matter what. You are my God and that will not change. Amen. You are my God. If you deliver me out of this fire, you are my God. If you deliver me out of this fire, you are my God. But if you don't, you are still my God. And I'm still going to worship you. And I'm still going to bless you until my last dying breath. I'm going to give you my all. I'm going to declare from the rooftops that you are God. That you are who you say you are. That you are the one true living God. The God of gods. The Lord over kings. That is who you are. Amen. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. I believe their response was respectful. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image you have set up. And God, if this pos- th- that answer gave them the perfect setup. Now they've positioned themselves for God to show up and show out. Because he either does or he doesn't, right? It's like, well, <laughs> I said what I said. I did my part. Now it's all on you, God. <laughs> Woo, I hope you deliver me out of this. But is that not what Jesus did? God, if it be so, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but what? Your, Your will, will be, be done. done. Come on. Your will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your will be done. Woo! Sometimes I don't understand your will. I want you to know today that if God says no, it is covered in his love. It is covered in his mercy and in his grace. Wow. Yes. And if God says wait, it is still covered. Yes, right. yeah. Amen. If God says no, if God says wait, if God says yes, it is covered in his mercy and in his grace because Abba Father knows best. And scripture teaches us that I, I ask him for bread. God, I need bread. Give me bread. He will not give me stone to eat. Because that is not who God is. God will give you what you need. Amen. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Woo! 19. Verse 19. 319. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. He was filled with fury and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It changed because he respected them. He appreciated them. He honored them. But now he was enraged. He was furious because... He's not Lord over them. Right, come on. And there's a king above all kings. And they just let him know, like, you know, we're not bound down to you. Listen, guys, when the laws of the land try to supersede the laws of heaven, okay, we as believers of God need to stick with the law of heaven. Do you understand and hear what I'm saying to you? All right, we're living in a time, all right, where the law of the land is trying to override the laws of heaven. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? And God's people need to stand up and be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and say, I'm not bowing down to that. It's not happening on my watch. And if God delivers me, praise God. And if he doesn't, I'm still not bowing down to that. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Jesus. The ne- then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. The expression on his face was changed. He ordered, <laughs> remember I said this is called the perfect setup. He ordered the furnace heated seven. Show me seven fingers. Seven times more than usually heated. What does the number seven mean? Completion and perfection. Completion and perfection it is perfect so you cranking up this heat seven times uh, 
potter devil is just setting up the perfect uh, situation for God to do what he wants to do. You go ahead and crank it up. Yeah, woo, I feel the heat. But go ahead and crank it up because God is about to show out. God is about to show out. Crank it up. That's right. Seven times hotter. Seven times. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Whoa, está caliente. Está caliente. It's hot up in here. All right, because God is about to set up the perfect situation for you. Amen. He's about. You feel like you're feeling the heat on every side. Get ready. Get ready. Because God is about to show out. God is about. That is not your time to cower. It is not your time to push back. It is not your time to go back on your prayers or, or to go back on your prayer time or reading or your church attendance. That's the time to crank it up too. Oh, you want to crank it up seven times? Well, here I go too. One, two. I'm going to go ahead and start cranking my prayer life up. I'm going to crank up my reading time. I'm going to crank it up. I'm going to crank it up. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to crank it up some more too. I'm going to crank it up. Woo! Crank it up. I'm going to crank up my worship. I'm going to crank up my praise. I'm going to crank up my devotion. I'm going to crank it up because God is worthy. And he is my God and that will not change. Woo! Number 20, verse 20. While in the fire, he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. These men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and in other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's orders were so urgent and the furnace overheated, overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men, the mighty men. <laughs> the mighty men. You know the enemy's got some mighty men. Did you know that? The devil's got some mighty men out there. <sighs> A legion. He he one of them. He he kind of mighty. All right, but not mighty enough for the word of God. Because when God said, get out and go into those pigs, they had to get out. All right? So don't matter how strong the mighty men look. Okay? It don't matter how strong the mighty men look. All right? When God has the perfect setup, God will snuff them out. He will snuff them out. Amen? Your job is that no matter how bound you feel, all right, with all your attire and all your gear to keep on walking in that fire. Keep on walking, all right? I got to face the fire. It's all right. I know you're going before me. I know you're going behind me. I know you're hemming me all around. I know you got your hand upon me. I know you do, all right? So he says, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell into the fire. The mighty men were killed because of the heat of the fire. But these guys, still alive, still walking into the fire. But did you know, <laughs> we're going to keep on reading. 24, then King Nebuchadnezzar, listen, y'all ever seen the um, double take cereal commercial back in the days? I don't know if you remember the double, maybe you don't, okay. All right, this is a double take, it's a double take commercial, I'll never forget that. But anyway, they throw the guys into the fire, the mighty men die, all right? These guys are still bound, they've got their hat, their tunic, the whole nine, they got it on and they're still bound and they're thrown into the fire. King is on his throne, all right? He looks down and then he, he immediately takes a double look and stands up. Hold up. <laughs> what does it say right here? The King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to the counselors, did, 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 did we not see three? Did, did, did we not see three men? Come on, bound into the fire? They answered and said, oh king, you're true. This is true, oh king, it is. He answered and said, but I see four men bound and they're walking in the fire. Four. Woo! I see four. I see four walking in the midst of the fire 
and they are not hurt. They are not hurt. And the appearance, the appearance of the fourth one, the fourth one, and I can see him looking with his eyes and following the fourth man with his eyes as he's walking around. I see the fourth man and he looks like the son of God. Some translations say the son of God's. Here's the bottom line. For a moment, God allowed him to see the divine. Amen. To tap into the supernatural for just a moment to show him who God really is. He is the deliverer. Amen. He is the fourth man in the fire. And you know, let me, let me make, let me, let me, this is something that stood out to me. Many of us, sometimes we pray for God to deliver us out of the fire. But God wants us to be in the fire. You know he's an all-consuming fire. You know that, right? You know that, right? Jesus came not to, not to, uh, he, Jesus came to baptize with what? Spirit and fire. That's what he said. So fire, fire is all about God. Amen? God is all about the fire. He's all about the fire. He wants us to be in the fire. He wants us to attain the fire. He wants us to walk in the fire. He wants us to be full of the fire. He wants you and I to be so on fire. What does fire do when it touches other things? Fire, 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 fire. That as you walk by, fire. 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 Amen. As you walk by, fire. As you walk by, fire. That everything that you touch catches the fire of God. Amen. You walk by your children in the middle of the night, fire upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's ladies, as you're in bed and you turn around and your hand happens to touch your husband, fire. You pray the fire. Fire of God, fire of God, Lord, fire of God upon my husband, fire of God upon my wife, fire of God upon my children, fire of God in my neighborhood, fire of God, I want the fire, Woo! I want the fire, I want the fire, I want all consuming fire, look, if you're going to set yourself on fire, what are people going to do, they're going to come and watch and see you what? They're going to see you burn, right? They're going to come, right? People going to come and watch you. Give them something to show. Give, 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 them some, give them something. And say, look, you get close enough, you're going to you get burned. You get close enough, you're going to get burned. You, I'm letting you know right now. Stay back. 50 feet. 50 feet. Stay back. All right? Stay back or you're going to get some. You're going to get some. Amen? You're going <laughs> to get some of this. All right? Because I'm not playing about God's fire. Amen? I'm not playing about God's fire. It will come after you because I'm praying the fire of God over you. Amen. I'm praying the fire of God over you. Gracias, Señor. Thank you, Jesus. Then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste, and he declared to his counselor, Did we not cast three men into the fire? He answered and said, True, O king. They answered and said, But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came to the door of the fiery furnace and he declared, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come out, come here, come here, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire and the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the king's counselors, they gathered all around. Hector, ven acá. They gathered all around. They gathered all around the three, the three Hebrew boys. <laughs> your, your, your hair on your head isn't even singed. The, the clothes on, on your, what? You, you don't even, you don't even smell like smoke. You don't even smell like smoke. Oh, you don't even smell like smoke. You don't even smell like smoke. You don't look like you've been through, sis. You don't look like you've been through. Everybody, anybody ever look at you and just be like, you been through what? You went through was a what? You did what? 
and they look at you and they say, I could never have pictured you doing that. You, you used to be a what? You used to do a huh? Nah, there ain't no way. <laughs> because when you don't, when you know what God has done and how he is able to deliver, Amen. And that when God says he makes all things new, right, brother? He does just that. He makes all things new and he changes and transforms our lives. Amen. This is what it means to be a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, everything becomes new. Everything becomes new. The way we walk, the way we talk, how we look, how we interact, or even our mannerisms and things like that. God starts to change them and deal with them. And he starts to sanctify them. What does it mean to sanctify? It means to set apart. Amen. To set apart, to make holy. God is good. God is good. Not even fire, not even the smell of smoke is upon you. Because he made all things new. Because the old is gone and the new has come. <laughs> because that is who he is. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. I want to be made new. God, renew me every day. Lord, leave, leave, leave who I was back in yesterday. And today I want to walk in the newness of life. I want newness of life. I want a new mindset. I want a new outlook. I want the word of God to reside in me so deeply. I want God to know that I am for him. That he is my desire all the days of my life. That my heart and my eyes are fixed on you. I will look to the hills from where my help comes from. And where does my help come from? It comes from you, Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. I will not be a victim to fear, to, to any of those things look man the devil had me so bound thinking i was a victim of sexual abuse that i would never be set free that those guys were gonna haunt me for the rest of my life but god said not on my watch not on my watch you are my daughter you are my daughter and what i got for you what i got in store for you is bigger than what you can think or even imagine amen you know what the scripture teaches us it says for though you walk in the flesh you do not war according to the flesh for the weapon of your warfare is not carnal it's not carnal it's mighty in god to the pulling down of strongholds and it casts down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and look at what it says be ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled when your obedience is fulfilled god help me to obey help me to obey because i want to punish disobedience i want to cast down every high thought everything that would try to exalt itself against the knowledge of god making me think i'm a victim making me think i will never come out making me think that the devil you know has put all these things and these thoughts in my head and that is exactly who i am and i'm never going to come out on top and i'm never going to be better and the situation isn't going to get better and i'm going to be stuck here for the rest of my life and what's my purpose and why am i here and why people don't want me and people don't like me and nobody's ever gonna accept me and la 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 but god he gives you his word and he says you're a child of the most high king you're my beloved my beloved and my banner over you oh, is love my banner over you is love, son. My banner over you is love, daughter. My banner over you. He is Jehovah Nisi, the one who goes before you. Amen. And his banner over you. Why is the banner there? So that the enemy know whose kingdom you belong to. Hello. So that he knows. Hold up, I see that banner. That say Jehovah Nisi on there. I don't know if I want to mess with that. Santo Dios. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. <sighs> not a hair on their head was singed. Their cloaks were not harmed and no smell of fire had come upon them. 28. Whose side are you on? Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Blessed be the God of Sebastian and Stacy and Eleanor. Blessed be the God of Karen, of Paula, amen, of Rachel, 
Blessed be the God. Come on, say it with me. Blessed be the God. Amen. Blessed be the God. Those King Nebuchadnezzars will rise up and look at your life, Alexis. Amen. Look at your life, Jamaica. Look at your life, Vivian, and say, Blessed be the God of Rachel and Alexis and Vivian. Amen. Blessed be the God. Blessed be the God, Joseph. Blessed be the God. Amen. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was sent, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own blessed be the god because you chose not to yield to the enemy and give in to his ways and to his temptations and to say here's plan b and here's plan c and you don't need to do all of that and you don't need to give that much praise and you don't need to go to that much church and you don't need to read that much bible and you don't need to try and act that holy because you chose not to give ear to the enemy and you chose to turn up and crank up your worship turn up and crank up your bible reading Turn up and crank up your your presence, getting into the presence of God. Woo! Woo Then your Nebuchadnezzars are going to look at you and be like, blessed be your God. Blessed be your God. Because you chose not to bow down. Now I want what you got. Now I want what you got. I want what you got. And they're going to invite you to the table and say, sit with me. What makes you so different? What is going on in your life that despite everything that you're going through, because I'm seeing you, I'm watching you, but you refuse. I haven't heard a cuss word out of you. I haven't you heard you talk bad or trash about nobody. You have every reason to complain and every reason, you know, to throw darts at other people all these people against you but all you do is worship all all you do is say thank you jesus all i see coming out you you got that bible on your desk what's that all about because i'm not bowing down that's right i'm not bowing down god is my god no matter what And I'm standing for him and I'm standing for truth. And if God chooses to deliver me out this fire, bless his name. And if he chooses not to, he will still be my God. And that's not going to change. Amen. That's not going to change. Because my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. He is faithful. He is faithful. God is faithful. If there's anything I know to be true is God's faithfulness. He is a faithful God. When he says that he's never going to leave you nor forsake you, brother, that's exactly what he means. When he says he's with you in time of trouble and in time of need, that's exactly what he means. When he says that when your mother and your father forsake you, I'm going to take you in, that's exactly what he means. And when he says, I'm your refuge, your strong tower, you can run to me and be safe, that is exactly what he means. Opposition before promotion. Listen, the break of dawn will happen. It will. It will. The situation you're in, it will turn around. For those especially who trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Say it with me. Lean on, not on your own understanding. But in in what? In what? Even in my opposition? In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths he will not he might he will it feels good right here i feel that air thank you lord (sighs) look what he says because you did not bow down therefore now i make a decree (laughs) any people nation or language that speaks anything, anything, anything 
against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego <laughs> shall be torn limb from limb. Yeah. You shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no God who is able to rescue yeah. like this. Go ahead, you can clap, you can clap, it's all right. What will he do to the enemy? Did I read that correctly? Yo, that was kind of brutal and violent. What will he do to the enemy? I'm going to tear you from limb to limb, devil. And I'm going to take your house and lay it like an ash ruin. Keep messing with my kid. Keep messing with my kid kid i'm gonna tear you limb from limb you could pray that in your prayer it's okay you can do that god i know you're gonna tear the devil up i know you're gonna mess him up limb from limb god i know you're gonna do it i know i'm gonna i'm gonna stay right here in this fire just don't leave me god just be with me Whoo! listen and because all of this in the midst of promotion i mean the midst of opposition what did he do look at verse 30 then the king, what, what does it say right there? What does it say? Say it like you mean it. Then the king promoted. Thank you so much, mama. You're awesome. Appreciate you. Then the king promoted. Ooh. The king promoted. How many of you want promotion in your life? You st- you okay with staying in the same level that you're at? No. The same place, the same situation? Or are you ready for promotion? Yeah, promotion. Scripture teaches us that God takes us from glory to glory. From faith to faith. From wisdom to wisdom knowledge to knowledge amen he didn't say from little house to bigger house although technically technically you know he does have a mansion for us in heaven amen yes lord but those things can come from god too they can because god is good he is good But those are not the promotions we're talking about today. We're not even talking about a promotion on your job, although that can happen too. And God can be all up in that. Yes, he can. Amen? Amen. Because God does desire, amen, to promote. Just like, because what do you think? It was a job promotion for these guys. That's exactly what this was. A job promotion. Amen? From being overseers to being governors of different lands over the province of Babylon. So God did elevate them and give them job promotions but it's bigger than this y'all it's bigger than that it's bigger than that okay it's bigger than that i don't know about you but the promotion i want is the faith to faith promotion that's what i want because let me tell you when you go from being an overseer to a governor the devils are bigger that's right the fire is hotter all right (laughs) It's, it's bigger it's stronger you know what I'm saying? And you might enjoy it for a little bit, but don't think that opposition isn't going to come there too. Amen? So I don't know about you. I want the faith to faith promotion. Amen? That's what I want. That's what I want. God, increase my faith. For those of us who are unbelieving and struggling this morning, do like that man did to Jesus and said, uh, my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. I'm struggling to believe that you can actually do this for me. Come on, come on. Because it's really good, right? When, it does, when God does it for somebody else, you're like, whoa. But how many of you know, like me, when it comes to me, or maybe I'm just talking to myself, when it comes to me, right, Eleanor, when it comes to you, you struggle with believing that God can do it for you. Come on. Oh, man, I'll pray a house down for somebody else. Come on, that's brilliant, right? You know what I'm saying? I will go to war for somebody else. But when it comes to me, I do get a little shy and timid on, and a little reserved, you know, because either I think I don't deserve it or I'm not worthy or I haven't earned it or whatever. And tell me I'm not alone in this, please, because I just put my business out there. All right. And I tend to kind of 
reserve a little bit when it comes to praying for myself. You know? But it should be the very opposite of that. You know what I'm saying? Because I should pray for you as I pray for myself. I should love you as I love myself, right? Amen? So I want to encourage you this morning. How many of you are facing opposition right now? I saw them heads. Saw several hands just fly up. Facing right now. Here's going to be the first, first reason to come up here. That you will say that you are positioning your heart. God, no matter what the outcome, you are my God. And that will not change. If that's you, lift up your hand and come on forward. If that's your commitment. God, no matter what, you are my God. And that will not change. And then the second, God, you are my God, and that will not change. No matter what, no matter what. And the second is to be bold as these young men. Help me to be as bold as these young men. Amen. I want you in your own words. Listen, I'm not, very quickly, the things that God has done in my life The powerful things that God did in my life wasn't because somebody laid hands on me. The most powerful times when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, when God healed me of TMJ, they were because I was in the place by myself and I asked God to meet me there. He filled me in my car. I was by myself driving and God filled me with the Holy Ghost and I began to speak in other tongues. So I know that I know that I know that is real. Okay, I know that I know that that's real. Number two, TMJ, my my jaw would lock. I couldn't, 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 my teeth would lock. And I learned about the laying on of hands. So me and my young faith-filled self, I laid hands on me and I prayed. Lord, heal me from this TMJ and no longer let my jaw lock. I was in my early 20s. My law has, my jaw has never locked since then. Okay. And I say that because one, those two episodes happened when I was very young in my walk. Okay. And I learned that the same access that the pastor has, I have. Amen that the same communication and the same anointing and the same authority and power that the pastors and other leaders in the church have, I have too because of the word of God. Amen? Does he not say, brother, that we can go boldly before the throne of grace? Amen? Amen? Sis, girl, God has such a call on your life. He has called you to ministry He has called you to the ministry. I don't know if that even means anything to you, but he has called you. I can see a mantle of leadership and anointing upon you. Is this your boyfriend or husband? Boyfriend? Amen? All right. God has called you. You are a woman of ministry. I don't know where you are in your walk with God, but God is saying today he is starting to order your footsteps. Amen? Because he is going to use you mightily. I see you behind a pulpit preaching the word of God. I see it in the name of Jesus. As you were sitting over there, I saw you. I see you preaching behind a pulpit. I see you ministering to many. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus.
over everything that she's got in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, God, that the enemy will not hinder her from yes. all that you have on her life, God. I pray fire be shot up in her bones in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as she declares, God, who you are, as she confesses you as Lord and Savior, God, as she acknowledges that you have called her and received her with all of her heart, God, that you will establish in her the kingdom of heaven, God, in the name of Jesus, and that, God, she will go forth boldly, proclaiming all that you have in store for her, God, and what you are going to do in this year. Lord, I believe it. God, I declare it over her life in the name of Jesus. God, you don't do this often. Lord, you don't point young women out like this to me often, but I thank you, God, that you have pointed her out, God, in the name of yeah. Jesus. Because there is a purpose in her life, God, to be called to full-time ministry. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will utilize her, God, to preach the word of God. Lord, to lead many, Father, in the name of Jesus. People will look at her and see, God, the goodness of God all over her. Lord, I thank you. I thank you and I praise you for leadership over her life. I thank you for it, God. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Bless your name, Lord. I don't do that often. Woo, Jesus. Okay, Lord. Praise you. How many of you will say, God, you are my God. And that will not change. Make that your prayer. I don't want you looking at me. This is a time for you and Jesus. The altar is about you and him. You and him. Not you and the people, the person on the microphone. So for a few moments, crank up that music just a little bit. And you right there with your own words, open up your mouth and tell God, you're my God. Where I have failed to keep you as God, teach me, show me, help me, strengthen me, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear. God, you are my God, and that will not change. And your second declaration is for boldness like these guys, that no matter what comes your way, you will not scale back, but will push forward for the things of God, in the things of God, and for God. So God, right now, as every heart, God, declares boldness over their lives. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I declare boldness over their lives. I declare that from this day forward, in the name of Jesus, they will not scale back. They will not let up. But God, they will push forward in the things of God. They will not deter. They will not look to the left nor to the right. But they will keep their feet planted on solid ground in Jesus' name. And they will plunge forward always, God. Plunge forward always, God. That they will plunge forward always, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Boldness like no other. I even pray that starting this week, God, you will set up scenes and situations, God, where they will have the opportunity, God, to express and declare boldness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And they will not scale back. They will not let fear overtake them. They will not... You better speak to fear. You better speak to fear right now. Fear, you will not grab a hold of me. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I will not, I will not scale back. I will declare the word of God in word and in deed. In the name of Jesus. 
Let's pray together. Father, I thank you, God, for every person that has come up here this morning. I thank you, God, that you see their heart. You see, God, where they're at. Lord, you know all things. Nothing is hidden from you. Nothing, 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 nothing is hidden from you, God. You see it all. You know it all, God. Every thought, God, every motive, everything, you see it all. And we pray right now, God, for just the cleansing. God, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, we pray, God, for cleansing. We ask, God, that you wash us and bathe us in the blood of Jesus. Make us whole, make us new. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our mind, our bodies, our will. Mm, right there, our will. Our will. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Who can say that and mean it? Don't say it if you don't mean it. That's what Jesus said. God, not my will, your will. I lay my will at this altar right now in the name of Jesus. I lay my will at this altar. I leave it right here, right here, right here. Not my will, not my will, God, your will be done. Not my will, your will be done in my life. What do you want me to give up, God? What do you want me to surrender? I will do it for you beginning with my heart my heart is yours Lord for anyone right now you might be in the chairs that's okay but anyone right now that just needs to get it right with God just wants to get it right with God and accept him as your Lord and Savior this is the time to do it so I'm going to just do one more invitation for anyone that wants to just give their lives and surrender to Jesus right now or recommit their lives to Jesus, you're welcome to come up. Hallelujah. And if that's you and you need to do that, raise your hand just so God and I can see it. I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. Father, for every heart, Lord, that right now just needs to get it right. I thank you, Lord. And we just confess you as Lord and Savior. We re recognize and acknowledge that you are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You rose from the dead. You conquered sin in the grave. And so the God that is able to change and transform our lives is not dead but alive because a dead God can do nothing for us. A dead God can do nothing for us. You are alive and well. You resurrected with all power. And because of it, God, you are able to fulfill your word in our lives. And so I thank you, God, for washing us, cleansing us, making us new by the blood of the Lamb and in the name of Jesus. We love you, God, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If anyone needs any other kind of prayer, you're welcome to come up. We'd love to pray for you. Brother Sebastian, if you don't mind joining me, and Eddie, if you don't mind.